The Grand Theft Auto series has always been littered with tons of cool, interesting little details you maybe wouldn't expect or even need in a game, but we really appreciate them. Really, we've talked about Grand Theft Auto V enough here, so today we're gonna go back to the older GTA games and count down a bunch of cool little details from them. We captured all this footage, but if you want any more information on these things, sources are all linked in the description down below. Anyway, let's get started off. We got 30 of them. Now, starting off at number 30, first, we're gonna focus on San Andreas. You may not have noticed, especially if you were playing back in the day on an older TV, but gang members in the game will make gang signs with their hands. Yes, that's right. All the gangs, you know, Grove Street, the Ballers, Vagos, they all have specific gang signs and their hands can make those gang signs, which is pretty revolutionary if you think about it. It's a very small detail, especially considering that the characters' hands in the old GTA games were basically like blocks. It's still pretty sweet. Now next over at number 29, you may not have noticed, but Denise, CJ's first girlfriend, will actually leave messages on Radio Los Santos in case you're listening. She would do a shout out call into the radio station DJ and kind of beg to take CJ back, beg for another chance. And it's super subtle, but it's always really hilarious because it kind of annoys the DJ. Next over at number 28, kind of like how dialogue works in San Andreas, a two in one. CJ can reply to random people's comments and you can change your body type and that all kind of affects it. People kind of forget that dialogue response was a thing in these games, whether it was just random on the street gang members or people making fun of CJ if he ate too much food and got fat, even down to even smaller details like some police officers even addressing CJ by name. The cool thing too is that depending on your specific body type, people's comments and CJ's replies will actually change accordingly. Next over at number 27, I don't remember if anyone actually did this, but if you overeat right at a fast food place, you can vomit right on the counter. Super realistic, overeat and then throw up and puke. I I've seen this happen a lot in real life in actual fast food places. Don't ask me, I've just spent a lot of time in them. Next over at number 26, when it's hot, you can see a really cool heat wave effect. This was pretty advanced for the time, and although subtle, really kind of made a difference in terms of building some atmosphere and really giving you a sense of real place. Next at number 25, when you get your hands on the thermal goggles in the game and maybe you, you shoot some people, you can actually see the heat slowly leaving a dead body. A very, very slight, small detail in a game that doesn't really improve anything, but it really just shows, wow, they went the extra mile there. And next over at number 24, the abandoned airstrip towards the later half of the game, there's a random wind sock that is blowing in the wind while it actually blows in whatever direction the wind is blowing accurately. This is pretty much true of any flag in the game actually, but that is just something really cool. The game doesn't really need wind, but they gave it wind. And down at number 23, you may remember that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas had skills you could kind of level up. Well, low driving skill CJ actually looks behind him when reversing in his car. While if you upgrade your driving skill, if you get the high driving skill, he actually just uses the rear view mirror instead because he's so in touch with the car. I love little details like this. I think that is the coolest thing, especially in terms of symbolizing some character progression. You don't see stuff like this in games anymore. Moving on over to Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars at number 22. It's a game that's not talked about enough, to be honest. But one cool detail is if you drive your car into a body of water, you have to do a little mini game to break the glass before you can escape the car. It's like a small little detail thing, but also kind of increases the fun factor a little bit because it's just a fun, quick mini game that adds a little bit more to do to the game. And next over at number 21 in Chinatown Wars, in the far corners of the city, out on the water, you can find signs that say, here be dragons. Here be dragons, of course, is a reference to the old timey phrase, possibly on maps, that would kind of just mean dangerous or unexplored territory. But now we're going on over to Vice City. We got some really cool ones from this game. At number 21, NPCs in roller skates will actually trip up in sand at the beach or just in grass. They can only skate on smooth surfaces like pavement and streets because that's like real life. And it's kind of funny when they trip up. At number 20, a really cool one, traffic lights will flash yellow during severe storms, indicating that there's no power or that there is a state of emergency, which is super cool because it's very similar to real life. It's almost like they knew that the game was taking place in a Florida tropical style climate, so they took little steps to really make it feel like that. And next at number 19, if we're talking Vice City, you know we gotta mention it. The Chariot Hotel, of course, one of the biggest hotel buildings in all Vice City. It also has one of the biggest uh, Easter eggs, I would say. The hotel building is obviously famous for at night, the windows light up in the shape of this. Yep, you betcha, it's a dick, of course, because it's Rockstar, this is peak. Rockstar games, humor, especially at the time, how they were with obscene stuff like this. It's pretty funny, it's pretty childish, but you love to see it. I mean, do you love to see it? I don't know, it depends who you are. Next at number 18, a weird little detail. Uh, you can only do a wheelie while going south 
at top speed. If you try this while going north, you can't do it. This is known as the infamous north bug. Next over at number 17, this was a much more subtle effect in Vice City. And to be honest, it took me a long time to figure it out, but you can actually improve your stamina in this game by running around more. More distance traveled on foot essentially levels up your stamina and Tommy can run longer without getting tired. And next at number 16, a small little detail on just how the world works. If you steal a bus, you can stop at bus stops and people will get on the bus and then they will pay you $5 because there's an actual bus system and you're essentially operating in it, which is pretty cool. There's like a little economy there. I wish I could steal a bus and have people give me money. Next over at number 15, in terms of getting money bonuses in the game, taking out NPCs that cops are chasing will give you a $50 good citizen bonus. Does that work in real life? I'm not about to find out. Next over at number 14, on Starfish Island, you can find a beach ball that you can just kind of kick around and mess around with and play with the physics and goof off, but there's actually also a secret mini game that scores you for how long you can keep it up in the air. I'm sure many people spent a lot of time messing around with this. Next over at number 13, there's a fake moon landing set found in the movie studio area in the game. This is of course a reference to the speculation that the moon landing was fake, possibly that it was shot on a movie set, possibly directed by Stanley Kubrick. I could go on about this, but uh, yeah, very cool reference in the game, a funny nerdy thing that we really appreciate. Next at number 12, the guy selling guns at the downtown ammunition store is actually modeled after Rockstar's very own Sam Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games. Considering those Hauser brothers don't make a lot of public appearances, this is probably the best you'll get. And next at number 11 in Vice City, a very small but very cool detail are the ghost ships. It's like a phenomenon. Out on the horizon in the water at times, you can spot the silhouette of a battleship. I say battleship, but there are also other shapes that people have kind of taken to classifying. You can't actually ever fly out or get to or reach these things. They are literally just little vague placeholders put out into the water maybe for immersion, but they're in the distance. They only appear for a few seconds at a time and they're just really creepy. If you've never noticed them before, definitely get a sniper rifle and take a look. Next at number 10, get a high enough wanted level and two cops in a sports car will start hunting you and chasing you down. And that's actually, of course, a Miami Vice reference. Think of this as the GTA Vice City version. It's super cool and it works perfectly for the setting and time period. Next at number nine, you can find guys who were drowned wearing cement shoes, mafia style, in multiple spots in the bay. That is a very cool detail and one of the first kind of water-based hidden details in a GTA game, and it's these dudes sleeping with the fishes. Next up, we're gonna go down to Grand Theft Auto 3. At number eight, you can actually give the finger to people. This was a thing I used to do in this game all the time. I would take Claude, motion him towards a car in traffic, and a lot of the times if you face the right way and the car honks at you, Claude will give them the finger. Seems like not a big deal now, but back in the day, that was a really cool little detail that just helped for the immersion, I guess. Now over at number seven, sometimes on the street there can be an NPC with some headphones on, and if you get close enough to them, you can actually hear what they're listening to. Another small detail that the game didn't need, but for the time, that was pretty advanced and really impressive. Also at number six, people forget this, but there is dismemberment and body damage depending on where you shoot. It made the shootouts really kind of more over the top and gory, almost like totally cartoony, but it really, really worked for the time. Also at number five, maybe you've never noticed this, but there's a functioning clock and thermometer on Staunton Boulevard, which actually changes and works in real time, which is pretty sweet. And next at number four in GTA 3, a very small open world detail, something that we take for granted today, but was incredible at the time, was the fact that some buildings or some stores open and close depending on the time of day. Most notably, some players have observed a strip club in the red light district changing from open to close from day to night. Again, when you think about it now, not the biggest deal, but for a game that released in 2001, that is absolutely mind blowing in terms of the level of absolutely tiny detail. Just wow. Next at number three, a couple of things. Uh, these are also in Vice City and San Andreas, but it really started in Grand Theft Auto 3. First, if you kill someone and step on their body, which is obviously usually in a pool of blood, for a little while walking around, you will leave bloody footprints. Also, pedestrians will sometimes just fight each other, but they can also even start shootings. They're very unpredictable and you never know what they're gonna do. And they were detailed
detailed and really advanced for the time. Also, NPCs react to destruction like car crashes or explosions, but they'll even gather around in a circle to watch something going on. Which leads me over to number two. This also happens in Grand Theft Auto 2 if we're going back even further. If you shoot people, paramedics will come to assist them and attempt to save them. This actually started in the original Grand Theft Auto, the one that started it all. Now down to number one, if we're talking old Grand Theft Auto games, Grand Theft Auto 2's forgotten live action intro thing made from a short film. It's a small detail, but really helped sell the game. There was actually an eight minute Grand Theft Auto 2 short film made for advertising and selling the game, which you can still access, but it depicts Claude in the game, stealing a car and doing crime stuff. And the opening of the game was pieced together from all of this. And it was just really awesome and a totally forgotten detail detail that we kind of wanted to end on and point out. But those are a bunch of details from older Grand Theft Auto games. There's probably more out there, so we want to hear from you guys in the comments some of your favorite little tiny details from these old games. Things that make the game world feel alive, things that make things just feel more detailed, anything you got, let us know. If you enjoyed this video though, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We'd really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell, because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.